Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching NDTV, and I'm Vasudha Venugopal. Two years ago, when the government expanded the scope of India's medical termina termination of pregnancy law to allow women with specific conditions the right to undergo abortions up to 24 weeks of pregnancy, it was seen as a move in support of reproductive justice that recognized that the state has a positive obligation towards women in providing them with safe and affordable access to abortions. The Supreme Court subsequently ruled that all women, irrespective of whether they are married or not, are entitled to safe and legal abortion, which was also seen as a landmark judgment. India is often seen as a country with much better laws on abortion, but women continue to face legal barriers in accessing medical facilities. A case in point here is what happened today in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court on Wednesday, while hearing the recall application filed by the union government against the court's order allowing medical termination of a 26-week pregnancy of a married woman, referred the matter to a larger bench. On Tuesday, the court had in fact asked for the abortion to be put on hold after the woman was permitted to proceed with the procedure. The woman in question here is a mother of two children who had already told the court that she was emo emotionally and financially incapable of handling a third child and that she had health reasons, including postpartum depression. So this brings us to the big questions we are asking tonight. Are Indian laws enough for women when it comes to comprehensive abortion care? What are the legal and systemic barriers that women face when they want to access safe abortion? And most importantly, does the abortion framework in India need to be centered on the welfare, well-being and rights of women? We have a panel of esteemed guests to talk about this tonight. Poonam Mutreja, Executive Editor of the Population Foundation of India. Dr. Archana Dhavan Bajaj, who is a gynecologist at Nurture IVF Center. And Ashutosh Srivastav, who is a lawyer in the Supreme Court. But first, let's go across to my colleague Arvind Gunasekar to understand what happened in the court today. Arvind? Arvind? Arvind, are you, are you there? Yeah, yeah, Vasudha. Yes. I can hear you. So, Arvind, tell us what happened in the court today because as far as I know, the Supreme Court, as far as I understand, has been quite liberal in interpreting the MTP Act, which is the abortion law. Now, in this case, is of course uh, an exceptional case. This is a case of a woman who wanted, uh, uh, you know, uh, an abortion at 26 weeks. So uh, she has come to the court, and of course, the legal limit is 24 weeks. And uh, she has she was permitted by the court to go ahead with the procedure on Monday, but then the process was put on hold. So can you explain to us what happened and what were the arguments on both sides? Was that the main uh, uh, statute here that was brought into the uh, play in this particular case is an MTP Act that says that there cannot be any uh, termination of pregnancy beyond uh, 24 weeks. And that seems to be the case when the first time when the woman approached Supreme Court that she was not aware uh, of, of this particular pregnancy and also she is not in a, a state to continue with the pregnancy and that's why Supreme Court was liberal uh, in granting uh, this particular direction to the AIMS uh, New Delhi to proceed ahead with the termination of pregnancy even though the even though it, has, it had crossed 24 weeks and it's currently in 26 weeks and also very importantly this particular bench is a uh, uh, bench consists of two uh, women judges uh, Justice Hima Kohli and Justice uh, B.V. Nagratra, and that's why when uh, Centre moved an application in Supreme Court yesterday saying that this particular order directing the aims to proceed ahead with the termination of pregnancy should be recalled, this matter was placed before uh, this particular uh, bench consisting of both women judges. And today when they took up the matter, uh, they took exception, strong exception to Centre uh, approaching through a recall order. In fact, Supreme Court wanted to know from Centre why didn't they bring this information before the Supreme Court even when the matter was here. And nevertheless, keeping that aside, they also went through the AIMS Medical Board report and made AIMS Medical report clearly stated that there is good chances of this particular baby surviving and that's why they didn't uh, want to go ahead with the termination of the pregnancy. And that's why today, uh, Supreme Court taking note of the fact of AIMS Medical uh, uh, Board uh, report, they also wanted to know from the woman whether she is in a state to continue with the pregnancy. And that seems to be the main uh, uh, ground today, Supreme Court uh, wanted to know the views of the woman and they also wanted to know views of her family also. In fact, the husband said that they are ready to go ahead with it and they will uh, keep the uh, baby till uh, the adoption uh, process kicks in. 
and even the mother of the uh, woman also said the same thing but supreme court wanted to know the views of the woman and after knowing the uh, uh, views of the woman supreme court also uh, took note of the fact that even though ntp act says that there cannot be termination of pregnancy beyond uh, 24 weeks but in this particular case uh, one of the judges in this particular bench wanted to give credence to the views of the woman and that's why both the judges both uh, justice hima koli and also justice dv nagaratna both of them differed uh, with their opinion one wanted to go ahead with the uh, pre- termination of pregnancy and other wanted to go Uh, with the act and also the medical board's opinion that there is good chance of the uh, baby surviving and that's why with both the judges differing uh, with their opinions now the matter has been sent to the uh, CJ where in a larger bench will be constituted that will be consisting of three judges right. where the three judges will take a call yes yes arvin so that was my colleague uh, arvin gunesekar who was telling us what happened in the court in the last three days of course the matter of this woman who requested for an abortion at 26 weeks has been referred to a larger bench let's go to our guest now dr mutreja i come to you first you have a huge body of work when it comes to women's reproductive rights where do indian abortion law stand when compared to the world do women still face legal barriers in in accessing safe abortions well i have to first acknowledge that indian women have far more access to abortion and liberal laws than much of the world and especially when we compare ourselves to america where the laws are so regressive uh, we saw what happened in ireland and many other countries so on the whole i would like to say i'm proud of our abortion laws but having said that there are enough problems as we are seeing in this case where even though abortion should be accessible to all women it should have been when we made the changes in 2014 and uh, to the mp mtp act we many of us said it should not be only 24 weeks it should be much more because technology has advanced but okay we, we won't listen to but in cases like this special cases like this where a woman is suffering from a serious enough mental health issue she has to go to court and then the court is unclear meaning that the court has i don't understand why the state intervened once the two judges had given permission and it is torture for a pregnant woman whether she it is because she has been raped or whatever good reason she has to go through an abortion to have the public debate like we are doing her personal life and situation which is already agnify uh, which is agony for her and especially in the case of this woman we keep having cases where either the judges or the state intervenes in as far as the di- wish of the woman especially suffering mental health issues there is no place for the state to intervene and the medical board i am very i have the highest of regards for all india medical institute i am very surprised what happened in a day that they changed their report and they have the ability to have done this report earlier a more comprehensive report second the judges the learned judges had taken cognizance of the fact that the fetus may be alive and then it should be put treated like other early uh, born fetuses so there is over here a uh, undue interference by the state but more than that a woman's right as both the judges felt on the first judgment a woman's right and a woman's desire or women's necessity has to be respected so while i am not going to condemn india's situation with women's access to abortion totally but this case is not the first case uh, where we are depending on doctors and judges um changing their mind i just don't i find it very difficult right. to accept that a woman who was given primacy right. uh, 
in the judgment hmm. what has changed right 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 so th that is dr mutreja making a very important point here that it can actually be very traumatic for a pregnant woman to go through something like this dr bajaj there was an argument in the court today that aborting at 26 weeks would amount to feticide i know each case is different but what are the medical threats to the mother when she undergoes an abortion at an advanced stage and what are the factors that doctors look into before giving the approval for the process um to begin with whenever a pregnant woman is um, undergoes a termination in an advanced pregnancy this process is almost akin to a vaginal birth so any um, abnormality or any uh, process that may happen as a result of that including uh, postpartum hemorrhages excessive uh, blood loss rupture of the uterus in rare event and um, any other you know sort of medical comorbidity if the woman has that could add to this so any uh, complication that one would see en route a vaginal birth would happen in a case like this and saying that as the pregnancy advances the chances or the risks of the uh, medical comorbidities and the complications do definitely agree but right. here i'd like to uh, you know endorse two things that dr mutreja said a our abortion laws are not regressive at all but saying that it's also important to realize that every woman is different every case is different for somebody who's who's going through the trauma of having an unwanted pregnancy having to go to the court and ask for uh, you know the the chance to sort of do something to her body which in the effect should entirely be her own call is something very very traumatic so you can't you you always have to see two sides to the coin there are the medical risks there is the possibility of the child being alive and which is now with uh, medical advent and with good nursing ca uh, nursery care is a very strong possibility and here i think the judges have have raised a very valid point but at the same time for the woman to be subjected to an open debate to me as a woman this is very very hurting right right mr shivastav last year the supreme court had held that a woman's right to reproductive choice is an inseparable part of her personal liberty and you know this was and the court had also cited article 21 of the constitution can you tell yes, us sir. how the dimension of indian law has changed with regard to abortion because even now women have to run to courts to get the process done uh see uh you know one has to approach the court when the permissible limit is over now for instance now section 3 of this uh, you know uh, medical termination of pregnancy act says that the termination of a pregnancy can take place only for 20 weeks and can be extended for 24 weeks if there is any men mental or physical health issue with the woman and article 21 uh, you know the court has interpreted that a woman has autonomy on her own body she can choose she can decide but at the same time the health of the woman is equally important during uh, uh, abortion she should not suffer any sort of risk that is the basic idea behind it now if we consider this particular case in this uh, the pregnancy was uh, more than 25 weeks and hence the matter was referred to the uh, supreme court directly uh, by the couple because uh, any medical practitioner would not do the abortion beyond the law and hence the permission of the court was required and hence they approached and they explained their uh, difficulty uh, because the woman was already suffering from uh, you know the health issues Uh, which was the basic issue why she didn't want to give birth to the child and already there were two children and hence uh, after the court ordered and uh, granted uh, that liberty to get the abortion uh, then the matter was referred to aims all india institute of medical sciences to find out if that is possible but the report what aims has given uh, it speaks that uh, the termination at this stage considering the health of the woman would be difficult because i think she is already going through some medical uh, treatment as well so considering all all these aspects the matter again came back to the supreme court to decide as to what should be done in fact uh, for the for the health issues of the woman that she should not have any issues uh, uh, if the abortion is done so in that case the matter is referred and uh, you know the the government has also suggested that if this order can be recalled by the supreme court considering 
yeah. that uh, there should not be yes. risk involved to this woman yes. so that is the basic uh, issue yes. here so i right. think the, again the matter will come up for further hearing when the supreme court can yes. look as to what best order can be passed right uh, dr mutreja would you like to respond to that yeah yeah i want to say that it is not the risk to the woman they have not said there is any risk the medical the second medical report has not said there is a risk to the woman it only says that the pregnancy is viable because the it, the 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 fetus when they are bought may be live that is the issue they are raising the woman is experiencing mental health issues and she also has fear she's taking medication for mental health that has nothing to do with any uh, risk uh, um um uh, ashutoshi for her uh, uh, to go through this procedure Right. it is also a fact that the um, medication she is taking may affect the state of the fetus so um, and we don't know what that could be so the question is over here the reason the uh, state went back and asked the honorable chief justice verbally to take this case re look at this case was only because aims gave a second report where they added that the um, fetus may be alive when it's born and there was a resolution given for that so i don't even understand why they had to revisit the very well thought through judgment that was given by the two learned judges uh, right. day before yesterday right right dr bajaj can you tell us about the magnitude of unsafe abortions in india and the complications because this is something that uh, dr mutreja was also talking about what kind of complications can complications can it lead to and what is the magnitude of unsafe abortions in india mm, unsafe abortions especially in the rural setting still continue to be in large proportions urban situation things are definitely different especially with the advent of the mtp pill uh, the scenario seems to have taken a, a change but in the rural india it still remains an issue of concern a couple of things which uh, which a person can face with an unsafe abortion of course could be something as simple as excessive bleeding anemia etc retained products of conception but it could be something as grave as sepsis as a result of the unsafe process uh, perforation losing the intestinal integrity and eventually even death apart from losing the uterus etc so the magnitude can be alarming and the sequelae can be very alarming right. sequelae can be so alarming that you could even end up losing your life right. or you could end up losing the womb you could end up losing the potential to procreate further so it right. could be any of these right Uh, Dr. Mutreja, you spoke about mental health, and I know the woman has also talked about postpartum depression. Tell us how prevalent is this, and why is why is there no dialogue about abortion at least in India because it's still considered a stigma. Well, I have to say that uh, while it is considered a stigma, sure, but you will see that in the both public health system and the private sector. Hmm. if a woman has uh, uh, till 20 weeks or now 22 weeks a woman can go for an abortion without any problems by and large but the unsafety issue even during sterilization we know women have died uh, we need to improve our public health system especially where women's health is concerned you know in chatisgarh 16 women died during a sterilization camp which should never have happened and 86 women totally had septicemia because of the not using uh, hygienic conditions now this is an issue it is a bigger public health issue it's not just an abortion but even maternal mortality much of the maternal mortality has got decreased in india as well as abortion related mortality has decreased in india with some improvements but we have a long way to go even today abortion related um, uh, maternity deaths are um 8% so the question is that we are not taking care of our women and the health system there is no need for any woman to die in under yeah. very exceptional uh, yeah. circumstances there is no reason for a woman to die or go through the uh, a, right. a more 
absurdities related to abortion. And it is the same thing. Having an abortion, the medical abort, uh, uh, surgical abortion is same as the same risk as um, uh, Archana said earlier, Dr. Archana said earlier, it is the same risk when you give birth to a child or you have an abortion, right? Am I right, Dr. Archana? Absolutely, it, absolutely. The same. And unfortunately, you know, a woman's life is already tough. She goes through even contraceptives. The more, all the responsibility lies on women. Men only have 0.3% responsibility they take in doing sterilizations, male sterilizations. It is the women. Every contraceptive has a side effect. Um, abortion has a side effect. Women are doomed, you know, in terms of the problems associated with all their reproductive health issues and in terms of giving them reproductive justice and support. The least we can do is not complicate matters like has happened in this case and many other cases. And mental health is an issue right which is included in the law, that if a woman has mental health issues, think of the implications for the baby and God forbid, if the baby is born and we don't allow this woman to abort, which I hope will not happen, the child is being read. It may have the risk because of the medication the mother's taken, but also no child should be an unwanted child. There can be no disagreement. This is an unwanted child. And we cannot do that to any child. Right, right. Thank you so much. Thank you all three of you for joining us and making such critical points. This was our panel talking about how uh, abortion laws in India have been progressive, but there still exist legal barriers to accessing safe abortion. The other story I wanted to highlight today is from the south of India. At a time when we are building the ground for increasing women's participation in politics, remember the parliament had just passed the historic women's reservation bill with an overwhelming consensus a lot needs to be done on ground specifically with sensitizing men who have dominated the space for years on wednesday puducherry minister for Trans transport c chandira priyanka submitted her resignation in her resignation letter she said that she was compelled to resign as it had become difficult for her to overcome the caste and gender discrimination in a male dominated political field this is not a lone case because a week ago, Andhra Pradesh Tourism Minister R.K. Roja was in the centre of a controversy after former Andhra Pradesh Minister and TDP leader Bandaru Santyanarayan Murthy allegedly hurled sexist and misogynistic comments at her. Let us understand from my colleague Uma what is happening in both states. Uma, are you there? Uma, are you there? Yes, Vasudha. Yes, uh, Uma. Irony, isn't it, that we call states like Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, all of these are considered as progressive states in the country. And in all these states, let me tell you, the number of women in the legislature is in fact uh, less than 10. And in fact, Tamil Nadu, Ta Telangana, as well as uh, Puducherry have less than 5, just about 5% or less representation of women in the legislature. Specifically coming to uh, the Puducherry minister, uh, Chandira uh, Priyanka, I spoke to her and she said that however accomplished you may be and however you, uh, competent you may be as a minister you are still looked upon as a woman and there is this male bias a patriarchal mindset that kind of manipulates you and wants to not give you the respect that you deserve in that place and that's the reason because of which she is in fact putting in her papers and she has specifically almost sarcastically uh, put a last line in the two page resignation letter that she submitted yesterday saying that uh, 33% reservation for women. I'm thanking all those people who speak about 33% reservation for women, but do it only in public meetings, meaning to say that this is not something that is being implemented on the ground uh, and nobody wants to actually follow it through and that's the reason. She said she was feeling very emotional uh, at this point in time and that's the reason why she's not going to into details. The uh, interesting fact is that Priyanka had been made a minister, woman minister, and it is over 40 years that Pondicherry has had a woman minister. Uh, the state itself, uh, uh, the Pondicherry as, as such has only, uh, you know, less than just about 3% representation of women. Right. The other case that you spoke about is of Roja, who was an actress who turned into a politician and uh, 
uh, the, this former minister from the Telugu Desam used very abusive language in a sense what she called as wild character assassination about her and called her names and called said that she's fair you know she's uh, appearing in blue films and that he has videos of it and he literally said that she is a prostitute and has been sleeping around and that's why she came into politics and that's something that uh, uh, she is trying to fight legally cases have been booked against the minister he's out on bail the cid as well as the police of book cases but interestingly it's only the uh, you know uh, her uh, actress colleagues one of huh. them of course has become a politician huh. navneet kaur who acted in telugu films and became an mp from maharashtra she has expressed pro uh, you know protest and support and khushbu and meena and ramya krishna and radhika these are all big actors in the south who have expressed support for roja back to you right thank you uma that was my colleague uma talking about the problems women face in uh, politics and also the bias and patriarchal mindsets that they have to counter in their daily lives that is all that we have for you in the news break keep watching ndtv